you want to know how to answer art sports question, subscribe or request. Let's review some nursing concept using art sports and English review. 20 question. You will love it. Let's get to it. First question. It's a critical question, a thinking question and content. What is the nurse priority diagnosis? Where would the nurse place the appropriate intervention? A client present to the emergency room after being stabbed in the left chest, keyword. In the emergency room, it was found to have tracheal deviation, another keyword. No breath sound on the left side. That's where it was stabbed. And it's systolic blood pressure of 80. What is the nurse diagnosis and where would it place the treatment? Chest stabbed. I have no breath sound. And I have tracheal deviation. What do you think? And I have systolic blood pressure of 80. These are signs of what? Tension, pneumothorax. I stab in the left chest. Air goes here, pushes the trachea away. I have systolic blood pressure low. Tension, pneumothorax. What's the, what is your treatment? Needle decompression. You need 14 or 16 gauge needle. Where do you place this needle? It's very specific. You don't have time for chest tube. So you place it at the mid clavicle. So you draw a line from the mid clavicle and you go to the second intercostal space. This is number one, number two. I'll show you how to read them. And this is the place you place it. Mid clavicular, um, uh, second intercostal space. Or you count four. It's fourth intercostal space. One, two, three, four. Fourth intercostal space. Azilla is here, anterior azilla line. You draw it like that and you pull here. One, two, three, four. So second intercostal space at mid clavicular line or fourth intercostal space at mid axillary line. So I will write it. So where you place the needle, these are the where you place it. Okay. Second intercostal space, mid clavicle, fourth intercostal space, anterior axillary line. So this is where you place your needle decompression. So that key is taken care of. Diagnosis and management. Very good question. Second question. A nurse is caring for a client in the code. The rhythm after two minutes shows supraventricular tachycardia, systolic blood pressure of 80. The nurse should first press which button before the nurse at her best action. Somebody is in the code, all of a sudden in SVT, systolic blood pressure of 80. That means they are unstable. SVT with systolic blood pressure of 80, you are unstable. What do you do? This patient need synchronized cardioversion. Do you see anything that says synchronized? is this button. You got to press this before you shock them. This is a defibrillator. To turn into a, a, a synchronized cardioversion, uh, I said, uh, a, to synchronize and cardioversion the patient, you got to push this button. Don't forget, sync mode on. This is what you pressed before you do anything. So that's the right answer. Number three. Which area should the zeroing stop cock keyword should be placed for accurate reading? And this is caring for a client with pulmonary artery monitoring pressure in the uh, in the ICU. Forget about this long big word. All we're doing, we're monitoring some pressure. The reading from the monitor were noted to be what? Too high keyword. Which area should the zeroing stop cock should be placed for accurate breathing? That means the patient is laying down and I have a monitor here checking for the pulmonary artery pressure. And there's a stop cock. I need to place it as a setting point. It should line up with the stop cock. If the stop cock is above it, my reading will be low. If the stop cock is below this line, my reading will be high. So that means we place the stop cock below it. Where do we have to place it? It's this point. And that point is phlebostatic point. I will show you later. Epps point is not the right point. This is usually fine in the test, the third intercostal space on the left uh, side of the sternal border. 
angle of ease be is between the manubrium and the sternum. So that's not what it is. And manubrium is part of the chest. So the right answer is number one. Flibostatic point. I will show you. I don't want to give you the answers. So there's questions that would, would locate the area specifically. Number three. Number four. Which landmark is useful for counting the intercostal space? You want to count intercostal space. Which landmark? And this is caring for a client with what? Metro valve prolapse. The nurse wants to count the intercostal space to locate the best area to auscultate the client's murmur. Where would you place it? Which landmark? This is this, the, um, the chest wall. This is the cyphoid, okay? We call it the cyphoid process, right? All this is the sternum, and this is the manubrium. And this space, okay, the junction between the sternum, the sternum and the manubrium is what we call the angle of Louis. It helps you count the intercostal space. Therefore, um, you have to know it. That's the angle, the junction between the manubrium and the sternum is this, the angle of Louis. How do you count the intercostal space? You see the, uh, the manubrium, the first rib is attached to manubrium. The second rib is at the angle of Louis. The, this, the space between the first and the second rib is the actually the first intercostal space. So the first intercostal space is bounded by what's the first rib and the second intercostal space. So this is our first intercostal space and this is the first rib and second rib. Angle of Louis is the landmark helping you count the intercostal space and is the junction between the manubrium and the sternum. We already know fibroplastic air point. I'll show you all of them. Number five, where should the nurse place the stethoscope to hear the associated heart murmur? A nurse is caring for a client who develops sepsis from infected pick line, keywords. A cocardiogram showed the vegetation of the heart valve. Where should the nurse place the stethoscope to hear the associated heart valve? So whenever you have infected line, central line, peripheral line, when you go to the heart, the one that receive it first is the tricuspid valve. It's on the right side of the heart. So this is the valve that will be affected, but you have to know where to listen to. This is the first rib, second rib, third rib, but if this is the first space, second space, third, fourth, fifth space, right? And so, this um the tricuspid is located on the fifth intercostal space on the left side. So one, two, three, four, five. But on the fifth side, but it's on the left of the lateral sternal border. So not close to the sternum, but it's on the right here, lateral to it. So this is where the tricuspid valve will be located. So the right place is the fifth intercostal space um, on the left of the sternal border, but a little bit lateral, lateral left of the sternal border. So I can show you where all the sounds are. So this is the aortic will be here, the pneumonic, they are all on the second intercostal space. The herpes point is on the third intercostal space. There's nothing in the fourth. And the fifth is the tricuspid. And the mantral valve is lateral. It's more getting to the end of the, is the mid-clavicle um, area. So that will be right here. So this is the, that's apical pulse. It's right here. So this is T, is the left um, lower side of the sternal border on the fifth intercostal space. So that's that point. Next question. 
A nurse is already new graduate to the ICU. Which mama is matched with the appropriate location to auscultate the sound on the client during teaching by the nurse? This is exactly what I show you. The aortic is located on this second intercostal space. Yes. It's on the second intercostal space. Yes. But what is the problem? It's not on the left side. It's on the right side of the sternum. So right side of just of the sternal border. So this is wrong. The pulmonic is on the second inter intercostal space, but is on the left side of the sternal border. So this is also wrong. The tricuspid is on the fifth intercostal space in the lower sternal border. And the macho valve is in the fifth intercostal space and the mid claw line as I show you from the previous question. So that's this and this is right. These two are not right. Okay. Number seven. And this is teaching you graduate about the herbs point. I show you which teaching should the nest include, select or apply. Where is it located? Third intercostal space on the left side of the sternum. So if this is the patient, patient left is here and your right, patient right is here. But your right is here, patient left. So when they give you a question, just make sure it's opposite. The patient left is on your right. So this is the patient left and it's on the third intercostal space and the uh, of the left sternal border. It's right here. And this is the place where you can hear your S1 sound. That's where you can put it. It's best to hear that. And it's also represent the center of the heart. That's the herbs point. And you can also hear your S2 much better. There's no normal there. There's no normal sound. It's not located on the right of the sternal border. It's located on the left. And it's not the site of the apical pulse. The site, site of the apical pulse is the fifth intercostal space of the mid clavicle line. That's where you hear macho valve. So one, two, three. And four are your right answer. This is everything about apps, app points. Number eight. So, a nurse is caring for a 10 year old client on the dioxin with a heart rate of what, 77. The nurse should check the point of maximum pulse at which point before administering the medication. When you're on digoxin, there's no means you have to know. 90, 70, right, and 60. Neonate, if it's greater than 70, you, you give it to them. Young adults, if it's greater than 70, you give it to them. Adult, if it's greater than 60, you give it to them. Okay? This guy, this is a young adult. Uh, heart rate is 77, so it's fine. We can give it to them, but we have to check the apical pulse. Where do you find the apical pulse? I told you, this is the first rib, second rib, third rib, fourth rib, fifth rib, sixth rib. What are the spaces? This is the first space. It's between the first and second, second, third, fourth, fifth. The, the way you hear the apical pulse, it's usually found at the uh, fifth intercostal space. So fifth intercostal space, okay? And it's at the mid clavicle line. So this is the clavicle, okay? You draw right in the middle, that's mid. Then where is the fifth? This is the fifth intercostal space. So I draw a line like that. As soon as it hit the this is where I'll put a point. So if I say mark that area, you mark this. This is the fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicle line. That's where you hear much more at point. Okay, so that one is taken care of. Number nine. Which location is normally used to zero? This is the question we saw earlier on zero A line for accurate blood pressure. This is the fibrostatic. Point. Where is fibrostatic point? You have to know. 
The best way I'll give you the numbers is located on the fourth intercostal space, okay, at the mid axillary line. So axillary line. And also the AP diameter of the chest. What I mean is where they intersect. So this is the patient laying, this is his head, and this is his legs. The axilla, his armpit will be here. So this is the clavicle. So his armpit will be here. The middle of his armpit, just draw a line like that. Let it go across the body. Then count the second, the fourth intercostal space. One, two, three, four, right? This is the first rib, second rib. So one, two, three, four. I know this is the fourth intercostal space, right? And so this is the chest. This is the middle of the chest. That's the manubrium and the sternum, right? So this is the AP, AP diameter of the chest, anterior, posterior. So draw a line from the anterior, posterior. That goes through the fourth intercostal space. If I draw a line going through the fourth intercostal space, all right, and where he and intersect this guy, the uh, mid axillary line. This is your fibroplastic point. This is where it's supposed to be. Or you can say halfway between the AP diameter, if they say that halfway. So half of the AP diameter of the chest. Yeah, if you draw a line and this is the halfway, yeah, that's your point. Or you draw a line from the fourth intercostal space where it intersects the AP fibroplastic point. That's your point. Okay. And that's where you zero. And the key point, the reason why this is very important, if you go, if this is the point, you 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 put the stop cock here, your reading will go down because it's above it. If you put your stop cock here, your reading will be high. That's why when you check checking somebody pressure, you got to make sure the ham is at the heart level. Otherwise, if you raise it up and down, the reading will decrease or increase. Number 10, a nurse is caring for an 88 year old client with frequent headache. He has headache and occasional vision issue. Which pulse point, there's about eight pulse points, is very important to include in assessment. So you have your femoral, the popliteal, the posterior tibia, anterior tibia, the carotid, the temporal, the brachial, all of them, the radial, you have to know those are the eight pulse points. This patient is 80 or 80 years old. Think about it. He's having a bunch of headache and occasional. Usually when you ha have headache, where do you put your hand? In the temporal area. Just right in front of your ear. Yeah, yeah, temporal area. Tension headache. That's where it's from. And his vision, most of the temporal artery can also uh, help with the vision. So the best way to know is pause in the inner side of the hand. Break you. How will test taking skills? How will something in your brachial area affect your vision and headache? How will something in your leg affect the, your vision and your headache? Something in your groin affect headache, you know, test taking skills. You got to figure out. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, think about this. Something in your arm, in your leg and groin is far away from your head and, and, and your vision. So, you know Pause in front of your ear. This is the temporal artery. So that is the right answer. Okay. A new graduate is caring for a 45-year-old client who need EKG. Which limb placement need immediate intervention by the child nurse? This you have to know. Okay. The limb uh, placement are usually they are the, just a monitor. They are not food. 12 lead EKG, they are monitors, they are color coded. So if this is the person, okay, I draw a box, this is the body, This and this is their left side, right side, you place leads, okay? I will show you, you may have your acronym already, your liver is here, and your spleen is here. The best way to remember is playing as a lot of blood. So it's the red side. Okay, that is fire. So spraying, spraying is the way the fire is. Whenever there is fire, there is a smoke. So the smoke will be on top. So black. So left upper 
uh, arm is black and the lower leg is what red. The liver has a bunch of green stuff, bar, so it's green. So right lower is green, but what is on top of your and green and, and grass, green grass, usually you have clouds. So these are white, right? And then what go inside your belly? Inside your belly is poop. Okay, when you eat poop, so this is brown. Brown is near the poop. So right arm, I told you the right arm, which is the patient um, upper extremities is supposed to be well, white. So this is wrong. Right leg is supposed to be what? Green is opposite. So this is green. This is wrong. The left arm supposed to be black. I put red here. Wrong. The left lower supposed to be red. I put black. So which placement need, need immediate intervention? So this one, this, this, this. The cyphoid in the middle is poop. So this is good. So I don't need. So one, two, three, four. I flip them. So black is on the left upper, red is on the lower left, white on the right upper, and then green and the uh, right lower. And the poop is in the middle. Black and brown. Next question. A nurse is caring for a client with aortic regurgitation mama. Which landmark area is useful for auscultating this mama? The same thing. Where does the aortic uh, mama can be found? Second space. Second intercostal space. Okay, just to this sternum. So this is where you put. If you put it here, you get it wrong. If you put it here, even though you're in the second intercostal space, you have to be close to the sternum. You can't go and listen here. You won't hear it. The pulmonary will be here. Second intercostal space, close to the um the 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 sternum. The herbs point is on the third side and the tricuspid is a little bit lateral and then the mitral valve is here. So this is A P E T M. Okay. Next question. A nurse is caring for a client with flatures. That means multiple rib fractures. It has six, seven, eight on the left side, and then right three, four, five rib fractures. This is the patient left. This is right. So on the left side, we have three, four, five rib. So you count the rib. This is the first rib. One, two, three, four, five. So five is broken, four is broken, and three is broken. And on the left side, um, on, so so um no I made a mistake so this is the on the left side what is broken is the six seven eight so I did not read it six seven eight so one two three four five six seven eight so this is broken and this is broken on the right side you have three four five one two three four five. So those are the ribs that is broken. So you just mark them. That's all. This is me. I can find image, so I draw my own. Yeah. Where would the nurse inject the medication? A nurse receive an order for endosaparin, 40 milligram, uh, milligram for DVT prophylaxis. Where do you inject the lovonos? You need two centimeters around the umbilicus, not just right near the umbilicus. If this is the umbilicus, you count two centimeters. So you can go like that. Any of this, this zone is safe. If you get closer, it's not good. You will bleed. And it's sub -Q. So this, I can inject here. I can inject here. Inject. So there's two centimeter lateral. Okay, so that's where you inject it from. Next question, what is the nurse's best action? A nurse noted the following finding during assessment in the client one hour after liver biopsy. I have a liver biopsy, all of a sudden, I see some what, redness here, another redness here, another redness here. So you have what, bilateral frank ecchymosis. 
and you have periumbilical ecchymosis. What do you think? So you have Kellen sign and a gray tenna sign. The Kellen is the umbilicus and the gray tenna is here. What does that mean? Leave a biopsy, you get this, you bleeding. What is the next best action for the doctor, MD? Right away, you have no chance. Patient is bleeding. You got to call them right away. They have to be notified. Next question. Select or that apply. Which area the nurse should draw the blood? A nurse, a new graduate nurse is caring for a new unit in the ICU. An order was placed for CBC. Okay, I need to get a CBC, right? Where will you place it? You all know you got to do a heel stick. But which portion of the heel? This is wrong. They will bleed to death. This is wrong. They will bleed too much. This is wrong. They will bleed too much. It's also painful. It's the lateral aspect. So either the lateral or the medial aspect. So on the side of the heel. So this side and this side is good. So B and A. B and A are your right answer. Those are the places you want to go. Okay. Number 17. And this is teaching you graduate how to place a limb uh, monitor lead for EKG. Indicate the appropriate. We've done the same thing, just show you where you can place it, right? So this is where you place your brown lead here, right? The left side, because you need a smoke, you put your black here, like that. And then you need your red, you put your red here. And then this is the white, you put it here, you put a green here. And that's the placement of the leads if you monitor, uh, doing monitor leads. Number 18. And this is taking care of an infant in asystole. The infant is in asystole. No doing anything. Indicate appropriate location for church compression using thumbs and fingers, right? Where would you place it? Mark the area. You look for the lower third, not the upper third. So this is the sternum, lower third is here. And then just below the nipple, there's no nipple here, but the nipple will be at the fourth intercostal space, one, two, three, four. So the nipple will be somewhere here, fourth intercostal space. And it will just go just to the lower side of it. So this is where, if they say mark the area, lower side of it and you push it if you pull it here you're wrong it's the lower third just below the nipples that's where you push with your thumb or your fingers for kids number 19. a nurse is caring for a client with a heart rate of that and dizziness right heart rate bradycardia and dizziness buzzwords which client did the client did not respond with atopine at rate of this, of uh, symptomatic bradycardia, atropine did not help twice. Where would you place your pad? You have to do transcutaneous pacemaker, right? The best way is anterior lateral or po anterior posterior. So both of them are the same. So this is anterior lateral. This is good. This is wrong way to do it. And this, no. That this, and then you can put it at the back, one here anterior and one posterior, it's also perfect, but this is the best one. And the last question. Which anatomical area is being represented on the image by a new graduate nurse immunizing a four mantle? So you have a four mantle, it's less than seven months. It's getting immunization and we go in here. Where are we going? This is ventral guru area. We're not supposed to go there. Ventral guru area is not supposed to. They have no develop. You cause too much problem. Nerve injury, bleeding, and the muscle is not developed. Okay, you go ventral lateral. 
Festus Laralis for kids less than seven months. So this is wrong. Which action should the supervisor uh, next? Which action should the supervisor next take is to intervene. If the case already injected it, it will file an incident report because this is the wrong side of injection. And this is the end of the uh, ways I think questions I think they can ask. Um, if I think about more, I'll make more of this, but this is the way I think key areas, the landmark areas, they may ask you questions. Um, thank you for sticking around and good luck. If you have any questions, just put it down. If you've not subscribed, subscribe, um, adapt and close YouTube and you get more of this content. Take care of yourself and keep charging as always. Bye-bye.